As we continue to look at magnetic fields, these invisible lines of force around a magnet, we're going to look at a really interesting chemical today, and it's a chemical called ferrofluid. And ferrofluid essentially is a ferromagnetic liquid. It's a liquid that contains material that will be attracted to a magnet. So I'm just going to put a little bit of ferrofluid in the beaker here and show you how this works, and then we'll look at how we can use this ferrofluid to see the effect of magnetic fields. Now you can see when we add this to the beaker, most of it goes right down to the bottom because it is a very dense liquid. But what's really interesting about it, I can take my little neodymium magnet here, and you can see that as I hold the magnet up next to the beaker, the ferrofluid will be attracted to the magnet. So I can actually use my magnet to pull on this ferrofluid, this ferromagnetic liquid. And that's what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at ferrofluid and how it can be used to show magnetic fields. Now I do have my gloves on today because this stuff is incredibly messy and I definitely don't want to get it on my hands, my clothes, or anywhere else. But we're going to take some of this ferrofluid and we're going to add it to our Petri dish here. And we're just going to put a little bit of this in the bottom. And as we hold magnets underneath it, you'll be able to see a pretty interesting effect happening. So let's add this and then we'll take a look. Now I have my petri dish of ferrofluid ready and I'm just going to take this little ceramic disc magnet and we're going to place it right underneath the petri dish and let's just see if we can see anything happening in the surface of our ferrofluid. So you can see when I stick that magnet underneath, it kind of spikes up, right? We see these little spikes coming out of there that look almost solid, but they're actually spikes of that liquid ferrofluid. And the neat thing is these spikes are lining up along those invisible lines of force of the magnetic field. So you can see here, if I move my magnet around along the bottom of the Petri dish, those spikes just move right with it because again, that ferrofluid is lining up with the magnetic field along those invisible lines of force. Here's a different shape magnet, a ceramic block magnet, and you can see again with that, it's the same effect, but you can see that the magnetic field is a little bit different. It's got a different shape to it, which is kind of interesting. Again, we mentioned last video, every different magnet has a different magnetic field. It's not going to be shaped exactly the same. It's not going to be just as strong on every magnet. You have stronger magnets and weaker magnets. You have different shape magnets that are going to have different shape magnetic fields. But we can see from this ferrofluid the shape of that magnetic field, how those lines of force are shaping up in relation to the magnet. And we can see here, you know, on top they're almost pointing straight up towards the poles. They're pointing more outward because, again, that's the shape of those lines of force. It's the direction that that magnetic field is going in. So ferrofluid is just a really cool liquid for showing magnetic fields, but we can also use it to just do some other really neat things, and I'll show you what I mean. So for the last part of this demonstration, I've just got a variety of bolts and things like that, and we're going to look at something really cool that we can do with these bolts and some ferrofluid. Now before we look at the last part of the demonstration with the bolts, it is important to understand one thing about magnetic fields and magnets. And that is, if I take a ferromagnetic object and place it against a magnet, it's going to be attracted to the magnet. So the bolt is sticking onto the magnet. But by doing that, I'm also creating a magnetic domain in this bolt that turns the bolt into a temporary magnet. Let me show you what I mean. If I take the bolt now and place it on that other bolt, I'm able to pick up the second bolt without this actually touching the magnet because the magnetic domain that's created in the first bolt will also attract other ferromagnetic materials. And that lets us do some really cool things with ferrofluid. Now I call these my ferrofluid sculptures and you'll see why in just a minute. But we're going to take one of these magnets, place it underneath a petri dish, and just set the bolt on top of the petri dish. That way we can put ferrofluid over the bolt instead of directly on the magnet. Now let's just watch what happens as we slowly add this ferrofluid onto the bolt. And you can see it's almost, it's forming these points here where again, 
because the bolt is a temporary magnet, it has its own magnetic field. But the shape of these points almost make it look like a, a flower that's blooming or something. It's just really, really neat to see how all these spikes form up at the top, but then they almost flow down the bolt as the ferrofluid does. Because again, they're attracted to the ferrofluid because the ferrofluid's a temporary magnet, and the ferrofluid is lining up along those invisible lines of force around the bolt. And you can see once it gets down to a certain point, because the ceramic magnet at the bottom is so much more powerful, it's just kind of pulling off of the bolt and going down onto the ceramic magnet. But it's a really neat effect being able to make these ferrofluid sculptures due to these temporary magnetic fields that we're creating. We're going to look at a couple other examples of this. Pretty neat demonstration of magnetic fields and magnetism. And again, it is important to understand the idea that every magnet, whether it's a permanent magnet or a temporary magnet, has a magnetic field. These lines of force coming out of the magnet, and this ferrofluid just gives us a really neat, really unique way to see these lines of force. 